Do you struggle with staying focused and feeling motivated? If you're like most college students, you probably do. So today on College on Fleek, we're going to talk about the new FOMO, focus and motivation. So stay tuned to College on Fleek. I'm Mary Dittman. I'm an award-winning business professor on the collegiate level and the creator of Wonderful Life and College on Fleek. You've heard of FOMO as fear of missing out, but today we're going to talk about the new FOMO, which is a mashup of focus and motivation. Fo, focus, mo, motivation, FOMO. So today we're going to talk about how can you stay focused and keep yourself motivated so that you can crush it and get stuff done. Before we get into the new FOMO, let's have a motivation minute. This is perfect because part of what we're talking about today with the new FOMO is motivation. So you're getting a little extra motivation hack right now. One of the best ways to get motivated is just to start. Just start on whatever it is, whether it's cleaning out your backpack or cleaning up your room or your car or starting on an assignment. It doesn't matter what it is, just start somewhere. Something I like to do to start a project is I'll do what I call a map. And that's basically just a brain dump or a brainstorm. I just make a list of what everything is that has to get done. And for me, that's enough to get me started because sometimes when you have a big project, you're not sure where to start, even if it's something like cleaning up your room. But if the first thing you did was you just made a list, okay, so I need to hang the clothes up, I need to straighten up the drawers, I need to make room in the closet, I need to throw the old papers away, and you just make that list to begin with, then it's easier to get started because you can just select one item from the list to help you get going. So there's a motivation minute hack for you. Just start somewhere. In every episode, we like to give you a study hack or a success hack. Now, the best study hack I could give you would be to go and watch our previous episode, which was episode 11, on our three-step study system, which is the College on Fleek Study Smart Toolkit. But what you really ought to do is go to collegeonfleek.com and get the Study Smart Toolkit for yourself. It's free. It's a one-on-one -on -one video tutorial. It's me training you on how to study, and it works. It's something that I developed for myself in college because I had terrible test anxiety. And over the years, I've taught it to thousands of students, and it works. So do yourself a favor and go to collegeonfleek.com and get your Study Smart Toolkit. Now let's give you a success hack. One of the things that I learned, uh, a lot of people read this hack in the book by Napoleon Hill, which is Think and Grow Rich. A lot of personal development systems encourage this, that you would have a list of goals that you want to achieve, and the key is to review them frequently. And what I do is I keep my goals, I write them down on a card, and I keep one card on my bed, well, my bedside table, so I'll read it when I first get up and then when I go to bed at night. But I take a picture of it and I have it on my phone so that during the day, I can, when I have a minute, I can just review my goals. Doing that helps keep you focused and remembering what it is that's important to you to achieve. So when you're tempted to burn up 30 minutes on social media, but if your goal is to have a 3.5 or higher GPA, you would say, well, really, instead of messing around on social media, I should really go to the tutoring center or I should work a few math problems. Reviewing your goals several times during the day helps keep you on track. All right, look, let's get into this FOMO. One of the things that 
can be very stressful in college is you just have a lot that you have to do. You have probably a full load of classes, you may be working, perhaps you're an athlete, or you have family obligations and a combination of those things. Plus you're in college, you should be having fun and you need to have a life. Here at College on Fleek, we tell you, you should be involved on campus. You need to be make, making friends. You need to do an internship. So you have all these things that you have to get done and it can be overwhelming and then it can be very hard to know what you should do and even just to focus to get things done, you have a lot of different things that will distract you and on top of that, it's so hard to be motivated. The new FOMO is gonna show you how to use focus and keep yourself motivated because I like to get more things done with less time and less effort. I don't believe in making things harder than they need to be. You've maybe heard the saying, don't reinvent the wheel. If there's already been something that's been created that would help you, then use that. I am not talking about cheating. Don't be using somebody else's paper or, or a cheat sheet. But by using certain tips and hacks, you can get what you need to get done with less effort and that allows you to maybe do more, but it also allows you to have a better life because you're not gonna spend your whole life in the library trying to study, but really you're just on Snapchat. Focus. If you are going to try to sit down and study for two or three hours, you're already gonna lose. Your brain just cannot pay attention for that long. That's a downside of taking classes that are longer than say 50 or 60 minutes because really after the 50 minute mark, your brain starts to fatigue. You can do what you want. If, if your schedule needs to be set up where you're taking 75 minute classes or a three hour class once a week, that's fine. But when it comes to being productive outside of class and getting things done, the best thing to do is create a deadline for yourself. Most students will say, I, I work best if I'm under pressure. That may or may not be true. What normally happens is we've procrastinated and it's not that we do our best work, it's just that we do any work when there's a deadline. But that deadline would work in your favor. Students who work or student athletes tend to have higher GPAs and the reason for that is that they have less time available. A, the best way for you to accomplish things is to work in a 45 to 50 minute block. What you would do is you might sit down at say one o'clock, set the timer on your phone for 45 minutes and that's it. You're gonna bang out whatever it is that has to get done. Maybe it's your math homework. Maybe it's studying for the quiz tomorrow. Maybe it's writing the introduction of your paper. Is it realistic to think that you're gonna write an entire term paper in 45 minutes? No. Go back and watch our previous episode on how to break down a massive project without losing your mind. You should never be sitting down to write an entire term paper in one sitting. But if you sat down and said, I'm gonna write this one section in 45 minutes, or if you said, it's not gonna take me 45 minutes, I could do it in 30, fine, set your timer for 30 minutes. Here's the thing though, when you're gonna focus in for that 45 or 50 minutes, that means no distraction. You need to put your phone on airplane mode, on silent, you put it where you can't see it. And by the way, if the phone is on airplane mode, the alarm will still work. So you put that phone on airplane mode, you put it where you can't see it, get everything off of your browser. If you're using your laptop or your tablet, take everything off that you do not need for the paper. So you may have just your word processing app open, or if you are doing research, then you just have your internet page open for the research and you're not running a bunch of other apps at the same time. Don't let yourself receive text messages. Don't let yourself receive emails. Don't let yourself receive phone calls. Don't get social media notifications. A lie that we tell ourselves is, well, I have to be, I have to be available in case there's an emergency. 
the probability that there's going to be an emergency in the next 45 minutes that you absolutely have to be available for is so small. And 45 minutes of focus time, you'll get so much done. Now, if you've trained people in your life that you respond back immediately, then this may be tough because what will happen is if your mom knows that she texts you and you text her right back, well, obviously, if she texts you and she doesn't hear anything for almost an hour, well, if you've set her up to believe that you always hit her right back, yeah, she might be worried. Don't do that to her. If you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a best friend or whatever, that they're, you, you always respond back immediately, yeah, the minute you don't do that, you're going to have drama because they're going to be coming at you with, oh, you're not answering me. You need to train people. What I've done is when I know I'm going on a, a airplane mode, a lockdown to get things done, I will let people know. If I've been kind of texting with my mom, I might say something like, hey, I'm going to be unavailable for the next two hours, my phone is going to be on silent, I need to knock out some work, I'll call you when I'm done. I would say the exception to this would be if you have a, a dire emergency with a family member, perhaps somebody is, you know, close to the end, or of course if you have minor children and you need to be available for a legitimate emergency there, in which case you can always set your phone to receive no notifications except for a text or a phone call from that one individual. But in order for you to use this time to really get things done, because remember our goal here is we're trying to pack a whole bunch of stuff into a short amount of time. A lot of times think of it like this. Many times we take like this sort of floodlight approach, like we're just trying to like light everything, which is okay, but if we really wanna be productive, we need a laser. And so for a laser beam, we've gotta really focus in and compress, and that means we've gotta focus in, single-minded, we get that thing done, we get in the zone. And that's what we're doing. So you have to set, your, your, set yourself up for success with no distractions. If you're living in a dorm or an apartment where there's noise, or maybe you live at home with your family and there's noise, and distraction and find a place. I have a couple of hiding places on campus where when I need to focus in and get things done, I'll go hide. And I'm not gonna tell you right now where those hiding places are in case you're one of my students watching this, but I will take whatever work I need to do and I'll go to one of my little hiding places and I'll hide and get work done. Let me tell you some places you can hide. Some students tell me that the library is actually not great for them that the library has more noise and distraction. So they feel like they can't get a lot of productive things done at the library. Fine, go to the tutoring center. Make an appointment and go to the tutoring center. Or find an empty classroom. On many campuses, you'll have classrooms, especially later in the day, that are not being used. You are completely free to go sit in one of those classrooms. Now, of course, you want to always be safe if it's late at night and you're not feeling comfortable about the safety of a building or of a room, then obviously you want to remember that. Especially if there are night classes going on, then many times you can find an adjacent classroom that would be empty. So there are still people there and so you are safe. Um, but even during the daylight hours, you can find yourself an empty classroom or a little corner where nobody really kind of hangs out and create some space for yourself to be able to focus. You cannot count on other people creating a space for you to focus because most of the time other people want you focused on them. You have to manage your own focus and that is something that in college, that's a skill you're having to learn. It's like a muscle that you have to train and it feels weird because you're not used to doing it. What we're used to is have that phone all the time and anytime it pings, we pay attention to it. And it takes discipline to put the phone down, put it on silent, put it on airplane mode, just have the timer going and then you just, you focus. And um, 
one of the basketball coaches one time would always, I'd hear him always saying to the players, play to the bell, play to the bell, play to the bell. And I didn't understand what he was saying. And what he told me was sometimes the guys would be out on the court and they would do something and they knew it was a foul and they kind of stopped. But if the official didn't catch it, then it wouldn't be a foul. And so don't, don't, fall, don't foul yourself or don't be looking at the clock and thinking, I don't have time to make the shot. So he was saying, play to the bell, play to the whistle. You keep playing and if you've been fouled, you'll hear the whistle or you'll hear the bell, but don't foul yourself out. So don't stop and look at that timer and go, well, how much time do I have left? You just start going and believe me, the timer will ding when it's time. So that's the faux part of FOMO, focus. Let's talk about motivation. If you go back and you look at any of these College on Fleek episodes, we always give you a motivation minute at the beginning of the show, and we talk a lot about motivation. Today, I want to remind you that the number one way to keep yourself motivated is use your words. Words, the way I heard it said one time, words are like little containers of power. And our words are so important. Use your words to help motivate you. Listen over the next week and you're gonna hear yourself and others. Oh, I have to do my math homework. God, I have to go to this class. I have to write a paper. And of course, these are things that you don't necessarily wanna do, but also remember that being in college is a choice. Now you might sit there and go, well, it's not a choice. My parents are making me come to college. No, they're not. Because realistically, if you dropped out or you legit said to your parents, I'm not doing it, the very worst thing is that they would say, we're mad at you or you can't live here. If you're not gonna go to college, you can't live in our house. Okay, you have to go get a job and live on your own. Well, complete independence. Going to college is a choice that you are making. And part of that choice is certain things that you're going to have to do. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you should walk around and say, oh, yay, I get to study for a math test, or yippee, I get to write a, a term paper. Don't do that. I mean, your brain's going to know that you're lying. That's not going to work to help you at all. But what you would want to say are things like, I'm going to get my math homework done. I am going to sit down and write this paper. I am going to focus and crank out some product today. If one of your friends is complaining about math, you might say, yeah, math isn't my favorite, but I'm going to get an A in that class. I'm going to go to the tutoring center. I'm going to study. I'm doing my homework. I am doing everything I can do, and I am going to get an A or my best grade in that class. Use your words to help you stay motivated. In high school, your parents, perhaps, and your teachers maybe are more encouraging. You don't always have that in college. Many times in college, you don't have people around you who are motivating you. And honestly, it's your job to motivate yourself. And even if I try to motivate you, if I'm your professor, I can tell you all day long, you're great, you can do this, you've got it. But the truth is that your brain listens to and believes your words more than anyone else's. I could sit here and I could say, you are the greatest. You are so amazing. You're going to do great things. I, I could bring into the studio, I could bring someone that you really admire, maybe uh, President Obama or President Trump, you know, whoever your, your uh, hero is. And, and that individual could say, you are the greatest, you're fantastic, you're gonna go places in life, but if you don't say that to yourself, no matter who else says it to you, you're not gonna believe it. So you have to do that for yourself. Use your words. Don't say, oh, I'm dumb, or I just can't do math, or I just suck at English. Don't say that to yourself. Now, you don't, again, you don't have to lie and say, I'm a genius at math, if you're really not. But what you could say is, yeah, math has always been tough for me, but I am going to study. Math is tough for me, but I'm gonna get this. Math can be challenging, but I'm gonna do everything I can do, and I am going to learn this. 
Help yourself out. Motivate yourself. Fo is focus. Mo is motivation. Now let's also put them together. Let's kind of up level our FOMO, if you will. One of the things that you have to do in both focus and motivation is you have to be clear on the difference between what is urgent and what is important. And let me give you a hint. Almost everything today feels urgent. And that is part of what your phone and your electronics do. Every time you get a notification, that your body gets a shot of cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It also gets a shot of adrenaline, another stress hormone. In the same way that if you were just sitting in a, in a peaceful environment, let's say in the library, and someone brought out one of those like big bullhorn things, or like the air horn where you go honk, and you would be like, ah, you know. <laughs> that is the same effect on your body as every time your phone pings, every time you get a text, every time you get an email, every time it rings, every time you get a social media notification, your body gets that hit of adrenaline and cortisol and everything feels urgent. On top of that, you have things that feel urgent. Maybe because your professors are telling you that they're urgent. You better study. You need to go to the tutoring center. You need to go to the writing center. This is gonna be due tomorrow. You're gonna to have an assignment every day. You have to prepare for my class three, to, three hours a week. In fact, I think on that note, one of the old sayings has always been for every hour of class, you should be spending one to two hours preparing. And I don't know if that's true. I think it can be for some people and it depends on the class. But if you have professors who are telling you that you're taking 15 hours of classes, that would be 30 hours of preparation a week. Now you're up to 45 hours in the week. Now your coach is telling you what's urgent is practice and your game performance. Working out. I'm going to tell you things that are important are going to be getting enough sleep, eating healthy, exercising. Your friends make things feel urgent like, we got to go out tonight. There's a party. Everything in our society is geared to make us feel like everything's urgent. Think about it. Big sale. Flash sale. Four hours only. Act on this now. Get it now. While supplies last. And when everything feels urgent, it's really hard to know what you should be doing and how to get started. You have to determine what is truly urgent and you have to decide what is important. This goes back to your goals. If you have decided the things that are important to you are your academic performance, maybe getting involved on, in some things on campus because you want to meet people and grow your network. If you're an athlete, you may say, yeah, my grades are important, but my athletic per performance is super important to me. What that means is the things that are going to be important are going to have to be your primary focus. It might be then practice time, gym time, study time, or uh, certain campus organization meetings. That means you put your focus on those things. You're going to have less time available for video games and Instagram and other people's drama. Then when you have something that truly is urgent, here's an example. Your car won't start. You blow a tire. Your mom calls with a legitimate family emergency. Those things are urgent. They, in other words, they would require you to drop the things that are important and take care of the thing that is urgent. Life is going to deal you urgent cards and you don't have control over them and frequently you don't see them coming. That's why as much as possible, don't let other things be urgent that aren't urgent. And other people will want to make things urgent for you. And this will happen in your personal relationships where if you have um, a girlfriend who's like, I need you to do this or you better blah, blah, blah. Um, her agenda is not necessarily urgent. You have to make that decision. And I've, I've seen guys that'll do this too. Like, well, you should come hang out with me. You shouldn't be at the library studying all the time, making you feel guilty. And you have to decide 
what's more important? How that person feels about something or your grades? Because I promise you as a teacher, when you fail my class, and I had this happen with a student, she was failing. She came to see me in my office, we looked at her grades and she said, I think I'm gonna fail. And I said, I think you're gonna fail too. And I said, you're missing a lot of class, what's going on? And she said, well, my mom wants me to come home every weekend, so I leave on Friday and I don't drive back to school until Monday morning. And a lot of times she was getting back late and she was missing my class. And I said, well, okay, you gotta explain to your mom that you can't be coming home every weekend. You're gonna have to stay on campus sometimes. And she said, well, but I, she's gonna be really upset. Okay, how upset is she gonna be when you get an F in this class? Oh, she's gonna be furious. I said, okay, well, you need to sit down and talk to mom and say, mom, what's gonna upset you more? Me not coming home all the time or me leaving Sunday right after lunch because I've gotta get back to school and get ready for the week? Is it gonna upset you more when I leave or I don't come home or is it gonna upset you more when I get Fs? And that's the kind of decision that you have to make. Be clear on what's urgent and what's important. All right, so there you go. That's the new FOMO, focus and motivation. And I wanna find out from you, what are you gonna be FOMO'd on? What are you going to focus on this week and make sure that you get done? Put that in the comments. And as always, College on Fleek is a dialogue, not a monologue, and we wanna hear from you. What are some of the things that you wanna hear more about here on College on Fleek? And always, you can connect with us at collegeonfleek.com. And join us next week when we'll be talking about how to eliminate distractions. That's a great episode. It's really gonna help you out. So make sure you join us next week right here on College on Fleek.